Welcome to episode 33 of Make Moments Matter, a music education podcast, a place where I share lesson ideas, songs, games, and inspiring things for your elementary music classroom. My name is David Rao, and I am the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter, and a variety of other platforms when you search my name or Make Moments Matter. If this is your first time listening to the podcast, welcome, and I hope that something I share today is helpful for you and might work in your classroom. If you are a repeat listener to the podcast, thank you for coming along with me on the ride and looking past all my nerdy comments, embarrassing jokes, and frequent talk about puppets. Uh, I also hope that something you have heard here on the podcast has been helpful and might work in your classroom. Now, you might have noticed um, I just came off of a 10-part series of podcast episodes where I was uh, fortunate enough to talk with some really brilliant people about the world of Warfshul work. And over the course of those conversations, we talked about pedagogy and recorder, movement, ukulele, how Orf relates to Kodai, how to get started with Orf work and get more involved with the local chapter. I mean, we talked about a lot of different aspects of the world of Orf work. And my hope through all those conversations is that uh, you, the listener, feel that you can connect better to Orf work or get involved or just understand better. I mean, I've done three levels of Orf work, uh, teacher certification and a master course. And Even after all that training, through these conversations, I felt like I learned a lot. And so I hope that you got to, you know, as as you listen to those conversations, you got to learn a little bit more through all of those people about the world of Orfshul work. My hope for this podcast has always been that it will be a place to share ideas and um, learn new things, but mostly that, you know, teachers can listen to this and be inspired. They can find resources that they need. They can get ideas to use in their classroom and just feel encouraged that maybe they're not the only one. You know, I remember back to when I first started teaching and feeling, you know, even though I was in a big district where there were like 26 elementary schools and each one had a music teacher and we met once a month. And I mean, I had a lot of interaction with other music teachers who did what I did. I still felt like I was an island. And it's just very different for us than our grade level peers who are right next door to another person who does exactly what they do. You know, a kindergarten teacher in my building has 10 other kindergarten teachers to talk with every day and say like, hey, how are you doing this? Or how are you addressing this? And we don't have that as music teachers. So my hope for this podcast and my blog, which is makemomentsmatter.org, has always been that, you know, music teachers can feel connected, that you you can feel like you are part of a bigger community and that we're always there to work and help one another. That's been my goal. And after this series of conversations about Orf Scholl work and thinking back to the podcast episodes I shared um, throughout the 2017-2018 school year, I mean, I've thought about all the things that I've shared. We've talked about folk songs, we've talked about recorder, I've talked about a lot of other stuff. And I sort of just want to hear back from you. What else do you want to hear about? Um, Because you know, I could go on forever about folk songs. I love folk songs like so much. Um, I mean, I I have a a series of resources on Teachers Pay Teachers called Favorite Folk Songs because (laughs) I just love them and I teach them so often, you know, I wanted to bundle up all the resources that I use and and put them out there for people to have. So, I mean, I, I could talk endlessly about folk songs, but maybe that's not the most helpful thing for you. Maybe you would rather hear about music centers or maybe you would rather hear about how to use recorder in your classroom or improvisation techniques or how to find a virtual learning network or, or something else. Um, and I can't know that unless I hear from you. So to help me know where to go next, either this summer or next fall or next school year, um, I'm asking you to send me a message. Uh, shoot me an email at makemomentsmatter at gmail.com is my email address. And you could even just put a bullet of like a couple bullets of like recorder, movement, improvisation, or you could 
be very lengthy with prose. I am that way. You could write out a long letter saying like, this has been really helpful. I would love to hear more about this. What about this thing? What about this thing? Um, you know, let me know what you're interested in. You can also find me on my Facebook page, which is David Rao at Make Moments Matter. And you can send me a message there. Um, that would also get to me and, and let me know sort of like, you know, what it, what is it that you're more interested in hearing about? The other fun thing that I am excited to try, and I don't know if this is going to work, but... Um, I set up a, a phone number through Google Voice and it when you call it, it goes right to voicemail and you can just leave me a voicemail because honestly, I um, it, writing things down does take a long time and I, I love to leave myself voice memos and things like, David, don't forget to, you know, pick up broccoli or whatever. And so I do that all the time. So I thought, hey, how cool. You could call this phone number and just leave a, a brief message about like, hey, I'd love to hear more about recorder or um, you know, I'd love to hear more about movement or uh, props that you use for movement or stories or books or whatever. Um, and so you can call the phone number and leave a quick voicemail. That phone number is 402-629-0808. And if you call, it goes straight to voicemail. I won't pick up and <laughs> try and answer. Uh, it'll just leave me the message and then shoot me an, an email with your with your message so that um, I can then use that as I plan for the upcoming podcast episodes. Again, that phone number, if you want to try it, and it might be really fun, <laughs> is uh, 402-629-0808. All right. Thanks so much for all your feedback, um, either through email or Facebook message or that that voicemail. Um, and thanks so much to the people who have taken, you know, the 30 seconds to go onto Apple Podcasts and rate this podcast. Um, it, it really does help me know what you like about the podcast, and it also helps other people find the podcast and Apple Podcasts. So thanks so much for all you who have sent out a message and also who have uh, left a review on Apple Podcasts. Well, today on the podcast, I'm excited to talk about one of my absolute favorite folk songs that I learned as a kid in Mrs. Riddick's elementary music room. And that song is uh, Sweetly Sings the Donkey. And I'm, I, it's just honestly one of my favorite. And maybe it's because I'm ornery. I don't know. Um, but it's, it's a great song. So uh, stick around for that. Before I talk about Sweetly Sings the Donkey, I wanted to share about one quick um, resource that has worked really well in my classroom and has been a lifesaver um, for these last few weeks of school. I, you know, in the last few weeks of school, I found like, oh, there's a day where third grade's gone, but you're going to get the like six kids who can't go on the field trip. Or, you know, like we have... Uh, an awards assembly or a spelling bee or something that ends up you only get your class that you're supposed to have for 45 minutes you only get them for five minutes well what do you do <laughs> so in my emergency backup plans um, I have a couple YouTube links that I love and I go to a lot and I wanted to share that one of those sets of links is to um, the band called OK Go and if you go to YouTube and I'll go there right now, um, just so that I can see what you're going to see. If you go and you, in the search bar, um, write, type, OK, go, it'll bring up their most popular music videos and also bring up their channel, which is OK, go <laughs> um, on YouTube. And they have a bunch of subscribers. But these guys, there are four guys in a band. They have done some really, really, really phenomenal music videos that are super visually engaging um, and interesting for your students. Um, but also just have some really great value to them. So um, for instance, I think maybe the video that made them popular is a video called Here It Goes Again. It's the name of the song, Here It Goes Again. And it's just these four guys on like a, maybe a sound stage, maybe they're just in some gym, I don't know. But there are like 10 treadmills and they have this choreographed routine where they like run and dance and move and flip around on these treadmills. And it is at the same time hilarious, but also like mesmerizing because they're like going over and around and under these treadmills. And they're just, it's super cool. And the song is good. I mean, the, the music is good and the visual is interesting. And you sit there thinking like, how many takes did this take? <laughs> like how much work do they have to do? 
And then every other video they have ever done is the same idea of like, man, this, they put a lot of thought into this. Um, and so their, their music is really good. In fact, it's probably, there are some songs that you may have heard of before, but they're also just super visually stimulating. Um, so for instance, um, one of their recent videos, um, is a song called Obsession and they do it in front of a wall of color printers. And as they're doing it, um, it's sort of like stop motion in that the printers are moving and they're moving in front of them. And you can tell it's maybe sped up or slowed down, but there's not any like Photoshop. It's just a, a wall of printers. And, um, there are some really cool patterns and colors and things that show up behind them. Really interesting. Another video that I love is a video called The One Moment. And um, this one was sponsored by Morton Salt. Hilarious. Um, but it starts with, um, it starts with just a, a quick explanation that says everything you see is real and it's happen in like four seconds and then get slowed down. So basically what happened was they set up this huge set, took a really quick video and then slowed it down to match the music, which I think it just in my head, I'm like, man, that's a, that's a lot of work. Um, but it's so cool and so visually stunning. And there's color all over. There's a lot of explosions and things that pretty much any grade level would love to see. Um, there are a lot of cool visual tricks that happen. Um, and you're going to find this in basically every video that they do. So I'll just say now, if you go to their, if you go to their YouTube channel, you could spend like an hour going through their videos, watching and rewatching, um, just to see all the really cool things that they do. Um, but the, and the ones I'll say that I have shown to classes, they, um, are appropriate for school and are really cool. Um, the, the, vo the videos I've shown are here. It goes again, the treadmill video, which kids sort of like, um, there's a video called the one moment, which is the Morton salt video obsession, which is the printer video. And the one that's been really popular with my kids recently is one called upside down and inside out. And basically what they've done with this video is they've gone into one of those airplanes that can like do a dive and do a whatever so that there's zero gravity in the airplane. And they actually have a, a whole video about like behind the scenes of how do they do that, um, which is cool if you want to make a science connection. Um, but it's just super stunning and like uh, the very colorful and the music is great. And the thing I love about Upside Down and Inside Out is I can make a connection with the form of the song because there are clearly points where the chorus comes back and the verse comes back. And um, it's, it's really cool to make that connection with kids. But like I said, just be aware that if you go and you watch one of these videos, you're probably going to be on their page for like an hour because they're really interesting and fun and visually stimulating. But these are in my pocket so that anytime I'm like, okay, I've got five minutes. All right. I can tie in, you know, the paint, uh, that we talked about in this lesson, or I can talk about color or whatever, um, you know, and, and use this video, or I can talk about, uh, you know, form that we've been talking about and use it in this video, or I can, just show this really cool video. You know, if I want to make the connection, what we learned in class or not, or if I only have five minutes and I just want to show this cool video that kids are going to like love and watch intently, these videos are a great go-to place to go. So OK Go is the name of the band. Um, you can find them on YouTube. I think you can find them on Vivo, um, but I would use YouTube. It's, it's super easy, <laughs> but go check it out. See what you think. Um, and let me know what is your favorite. Okay. Go video. Well, I'm really excited to talk about one of my absolute favorite folk songs of all time. Um, and it's called sweetly sings the donkey. Um, this folk song I learned when I was a kid. And I thought it was hilarious then. I still think it's pretty hilarious. Um, and I love it. it for a lot of different reasons. I'll tell you that, you know, a lot of people at the end of the school year um, will do like a unit on camp songs or they'll do a unit on, uh, you know, songs from around the world or whatever. To, it's sort of a, a culminating like fun thing that kids can look forward to and they can look forward to. Um I do that same sort of thing, especially with kindergarten, first and second grade. Um, but I don't do camp songs. Um, I do barnyard songs. I do songs about animals. 
And I find that especially fascinating for my students because I I grew up in a, a rural school and I grew up actually living on a farm. So the farm songs meant a lot to me then because I I had a connection to a lot of the animals or the things that were happening. At least I had a, a good base understanding. What's interesting to me now is that a lot of my kids in, in my little suburban school don't really know what animals sound like or look like or what they do, or if they do have a little bit of knowledge just from like a petting zoo or like we took a field trip to the farm. Um, and it's not so much like we know this on a daily basis, but we just know about it. So it's fun to enhance schema a little bit when you do these barnyard songs and talk about um, different kinds of animals and play actual animal sounds and show pictures. I think it's it's great for kids because they are stimulated by it. They're fascinated by it. Um, and also they just, you know, like the songs. The songs are usually pretty good too. This is one of those songs. Um, it's, it's really fun. There are some great musical connections um, and it's funny. So uh, let me just sing the song in case you haven't heard it before. Um, I'll sing through it and then I'll talk uh, a little bit about the connections I make and what I do with this lesson. Sweetly sings the donkey at the break of day. If you do not feed him, this is what he'll say. Hee-haw, 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 hee-haw. Okay, so you can probably guess why a little seven-year-old David loved this song. Um... I mean, what's not to love when you get to bray like a donkey? And for the record, I even tried to tone it down a little bit so I wouldn't, you know, blast out my microphone and blast out the speakers in your car or earbuds or wherever you're listening. Um, But I I love this song growing up because it was just so much fun. Um, And now I love to teach it because, again, it is a lot of fun. And um, I'll just say briefly now, you're going to get those kids who try and yell hee-haw. And I, I do try and get them to sing, but if they get exuberant and a little loud, I try and remember that I was the exact same way as a seven-year-old and wanted to do that too. So I, I try and go a little easy on them. So uh, when I introduce this song, um, I start with a story. I do that a lot with a lot of songs and games and, and concepts that I introduce because I think making it a narrative is a lot more engaging for kids. And so I, I talk a, a little bit about what it's like to grow up on a farm and uh you know whether you're talking about you know like the westward expansion or you know frontier times or you know the last century or even today you can talk about kids having chores and kids waking up and having to do some things before they could really start their day because that's a reality for people who grow up on the farm or who used to be on a farm or you know it, it's it's a reality and a lot of kids know about that and if you talk about well yeah maybe you have chores or you know maybe you have um, things you have to do every day kids relate to that so um, we talk a little bit about a farm and can talk about some of those chores what those chores might be and um, you know we could talk about I, I like to ask kids well, what do you think some of the chores on the farm would have to be the things you'd have to do every day well you know get eggs from the chicken coop yes milk the cows Yes. Um, you know, what are some of the things? Water the plants. Sure. Things like that. And then usually kids will say feed animals. And that I think that's understandable for them because a lot of kids have dogs or cats at home, even if they live in the city or the suburbs or wherever, and uh, they have to feed the animals every day. So um, that's something that um, usually comes up. And you could talk about, well, what animals would you feed? Would you feed the, the chickens? You'd feed the llamas or the cows or whatever it is you have. And then I will eventually say, well, when I was growing up on my farm, we had a donkey. That's not actually true. We did not actually have a donkey. But a lot of times I'll do the, well, when I was growing up, because it makes it more personal and it's it's technically sort of a white lie, but it's also a narrative. You're being a storyteller. And so I think that's fine. (laughs) So I talk about, well, when I was growing up, we had a donkey and this donkey would get up in the morning and it was so sweet and it was very nice. And then it would tell you that it was ready to have its food. It would tell you it was hungry and it would tell you by sweetly singing, the only way a donkey knows how. 
And I say, does anyone here know the sound that a donkey makes? And kids usually like, hee-haw, you know, and I'm like, yes. Oh, isn't that so sweet and beautiful? And they're like, no, <laughs> it's not a beautiful sound. And it's, it's fun to have them sort of make the connection like, that's the sound a donkey makes. Maybe to a donkey, that's a sweet, beautiful sound. Well, we, you could talk about the concept of what's a beautiful sound or whatever. Depending on the grade level you're teaching this to, that might be a fun, appropriate connection. So I go on and say, yes, and the donkey would tell us every morning, I am hungry. And then I sing the song, sweetly sings the donkey. And I, I get to the part, and when I get to the hee-haw, oh, the kids just, they they die. They think it's hilarious. Um, and so uh, we, we go on and I teach them the song. And th- there's some really cool things you can do with this song. Um, First things first, I like I like to talk to kids about what a donkey is because a lot of kids don't know. And so I show them um, a picture of what a donkey looks like. And we talk about, you know, they've been a working animal and uh, they carry things or they do things. And, and sometimes kids know a little bit about that or saw one on vacation or saw one on a farm. And um, it's, it's cool to, to hear about those experiences. I also sometimes talk about daybreak. Because in the song, it goes, sweetly sings the donkey at the break of day. And, you know, so we could talk about daybreak and when sun, sunlight appears. That's sort of fun to talk about. Um, and so then we can get into the, you know, animal sounds. And, you know, hee-haw is not actually what an anim- what the donkey sounds like, but it's close. So um, you could... Um, you could play an actual donkey sound for kids. That's sort of fun. Um, there's a great app called I Hear You, E-W-E for you. It's free, I believe, and it plays a lot of animal sounds, um, what they actually sound like. And this, so that's sort of really a great experience for kids. So if you have time, that's a, a cool app to download and use with this song. Um, but what I eventually like to get to is once we've sung the song a little bit, we could act it out. We could do some movements so that they're you know, sweetly, slowly waking up. And as they wake up, they, you know, they open their eyes and they look around and they're smiling and they make beautiful, smiling, happy faces. And then when we get to the hee-haw part, they can make the most donkey, ugly, silly face they want as they sing that part and go on. Um, So you could leave the song at that, but I really try and get to um, doing this song as a round um, or or canon, I guess. Um, and I, I love using it, it for that because it, it works pretty seamlessly and most kids can do it. Um, and it's fun to hear kids at different times doing the hee-haw or doing the sweetly part because then they have to really focus on, am I being sweet? Am I being calm or being excited and having fun with the hee-haw? And kids like that. I like that. It's a really easy song to do as a round and break into different groups. If you've, you, you know, use that concept through the year, um, it's a, this is a great song to sort of recap that and to um, to have fun with. You could br- you could even break the class into you know I said I start with the little movement where they're pantomiming sleeping and waking up and being sweet. Well, you could have them do the movement as they sing the song, and you'd have you know three groups doing you know the different parts of the round, and it's really cool to see that. If you've not done a round with kids before and you want to try it, um, I would say the the easiest way to ease into that that I found that has worked for me is that if you have the kids who you know very confident sing the song and you come in on the second part you come in late um, and then let them you know have them keep going and you sing a little bit behind them you sing, sing the second part of the round and just let them listen to that and instead of breaking them into two groups and trying to race them into it right away if you let them stay in one big group and then you do the round that makes it easier at first. And then you could you know, either switch roles, you could break them into two groups, but I like to start at where the first time they hear the round, I'm the one doing the round. And I say like, oh, keep going, don't let me mess you up. You know, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. And then we talk about what is it, what is he doing? Oh, I'm just a little bit behind everyone else. I'm not saying the wrong words, I'm saying the same words and the same music. I'm just a little bit behind everyone. And, um, that, that seems to work when I'm the first one to model and then I let them do it. So like I said, I start this sort of as a narrative talking about 
um, my farm or, you know, talking about giving kids a connection to what it's like to grow up on a farm and um, the chores you have to do, make it sort of a narrative, then talk about donkeys and ease into this song specifics. Um, the cool thing about this song is it's very, very old. The first time it was written down was in 1878. Um, and they don't know a lot about it uh, past where they think it originated in England uh, and then spread from there. Um, they're not completely sure. Um, I've done a little bit of research on it. I brought together all the resources I used for this song and, and made a, um, a favorite folk song kit, which is um, which I use in my classroom. I'll put a link to that in the show notes in case you're interested. Um, but it's, it's a really cool song that um, I use for a lot of different things. Um, you could use it for animal sounds. You could use it for the round. You could use it for, you know, talking about westward expansion or tying into that uh, grade level concept. Um, there, there are a lot of cool things you can do with it, which is why I keep coming back to it year after year. Sweetly sings the donkey. I promise it's going to be a classroom favorite. That's all for this episode of the podcast. If you'd like to get more ideas or see a window into my classroom, you can find me on Facebook or you can find me on Instagram when you search David Rao or Make Moments Matter. If you have an idea of something you'd like to hear about on the podcast, shoot me an email at makemomentsmatter at gmail.com or leave me the voicemail at 402-629-0808. Have a great week.